Hi and welcome back. Let's talk about gouache, or is it tempera, or what is the name of this paint? Because if you start looking around, you might see it sold as gouache, tempera, or poster paint. So what's the difference between the three? Well, to start with tempera, the original meaning of tempera was very specific. It was a paint that was made by mixing pigments in with egg yolks and painted with. And that was kind of a very important art paint on, up until the 16th century where they invented oil paint. And then the egg tempera took a little bit of a backseat. Egg tempera is not water soluble once it's dry. And um, I only know one company that makes egg uh, tempera these days and it is Sennelier so if you buy their tempera that is an egg tempera and it will not be a gouache you can work with it kind of, as long as it was wet as you will with a gouache but once it's dry it will not move again when you add water but over the time things have gotten a little fuzzy so nowadays you can buy water-soluble paints uh, that is called gouache and sometimes it's called tempera um, and you can also buy it as poster paint that is kind of the American version of this um, and then there's some sub divisions where it seems like poster paint more and more is sold as kids paint uh, and sometimes Poster paint is called tempera. I think it might be called tempera more in Europe and poster paint in the States. That makes sense. And um, and poster paint uh, and and the very mo most of the very cheap uh, water soluble paints that is not acrylics. They use a different binder than watercolor. Watercolor is almost always either honey or gum arabic uh, gouache can be the binder can be gum arabic but it is often a, a different binder called um, dextrin yellow dextrin royal talons uh, use dextrin in their fine gouache and i found another reference that said pretty much all the inexpensive Poster paints use dextrin as well. Um, I couldn't find any reference to what the big difference is. It, it activates apparently a little better than uh, than gum arabic and is a lot lot less expensive uh, to produce and, and get. So that was the binders. Then there's the. Let's go back to the name because uh, this kind of paint has been around for a long time. And um, but in the 18th century, the French gave it the name gouache, and it's derived from the Italian word that is maybe pronounced guazzo. I'm sorry, I never learned Italian. I'm just kind of reading up from my notes. And uh, if there's any Italian speaking people around, I am so, so sorry for my poor pronunciation. Um, yeah, and po uh, the Americans decided to call it poster paint. Maybe because I've heard a lot of Americans break their tongue with the word gouache. So, um, yeah. Some uh, gouache paints has a filler in it that makes it more opaque it can be anything from titanium white it can be chalk it can be uh, felspar and or talcum powder and all of these will make the paint more opaque but it can also give it a little bit of a grayish finish at the end any gouache should have a velvety look when it's finished but some of these uh, fillers if they especially if there's too much in there 
it can make it look chalky uh, and, and a little dull uh, grayish at the, as a finish. But it makes the paint more opaque and some people find that easier to work with. So it's anybody's choice what they, they like the best. Um, because the pigment used, they are the same pigments as you will find in any other uh, decorative paint, but they are milled uh, coarser than for watercolor. Watercolor has very fine pigments and they go in and they kind of grab onto the paper and sits between the fibers in, in the paper, so, so they stick better on the paper all by themselves. Our squash is milled, as I said, not so finely, so that sit on on the surface of the paper, and is held on by the binder. Um, so that's that's kind of a, a big difference. The way you work with with them, I'll get back to. Let's talk about putting them in pans. Um, squash breaks and cracks. It can happen if you put two thick layers on your paper or whatever you're painting on. I will say it has to be really thick layers because I've never had a gouache painting crack for me. Even though I was concerned at some point uh, with sometimes where I've been painting and painting and I'm thinking, okay, how many layers can this take before it cracks? It haven't ever happened to me. Um, Sometimes they add glycerol to the mix as well to make the paint layer more flexible and it also pans up a little better, but they crack in in pans. You can yourself add more glycerol or some gum arabic or a little bit of honey to your, to your gouache if you insist on wanting them in pans. Uh, the glycerol will make them activate a little easier. And I'll put a, a piece of warning on here saying if you add glycerol and they activate it easier, that will make it harder for you to, to layer on top of it too because you risk to activate the uh, first layer easier than you would normally without adding it. So um, I was an idiot. I put my, my first squash I bought. Uh, in this round of art, what three, four years ago, in this pan set and er, palette, and as you can see, it, it's it's just all chunks. Um, it's also harder to to reactivate them, and they don't paint as well once they have been dried. So, whatever people do with their paints is none of my business. What I do with my paint is my business and I'm never gonna do this again. I'll try and use up the paint I got in here and then I'm gonna scrub this uh, palette clean and use it for watercolors uh, in the future. I don't think uh, there's any benefit of it to have them dry. So let's keep this open and keep it around because I might show you the differences. I got a teaser gouache here and I think I will actually take some of this out and use this as part of my demonstration. I quite like this and it has some paints in here that is suitable for my explanations and talk here. I need a palette. Um, uh, I've got lots of paint leftovers on, on palettes here and there so let me find one that is fairly clean. There we go. So let's grab this. Let's grab this rose color. That's one of them. Let's grab ultramarine as another. Let's 
take the light apricot as a third. And we definitely need some white. Mm, yeah. We might grab some more as we go along. Let me grab the white out of here so we got all the tubes ready to talk about. So I have picked these not totally at random. I picked two that is listed as opaque on their tube. These are the squares. They are filled out with color. So that means they should be opaque. White pigment is opaque no matter what kind of pigment you get. So the rose is listed with half a, oh, better focus on this, with half a square and that means that is semi-opaque. And this ultramarine has no uh, filling in its square, this means it is actually transparent. So this thing about people saying, oh gouache is just like a, a um, opaque watercolor. It's just not really true because, I mean, let's look at that ultramarine, even in, in a fairly thick stage. You can see it is transparent. You can see the paper through the paint. I would have to cover the paper with several layers of ultramarine before it would be opaque. On the other end, we got, let's take this peach apricot. If we take this and put down beside it, this is quite opaque in itself. And that's because this is a mixture that has quite a good deal of white in it. So this, uh, this is quite opaque uh, and it's fairly easy to make it cover the paper so you don't see the white of the paper through it in the same manner as you now see the, the ultramarine. And we got here, the rose was kind of in between, so this, this should cover better than the ultramarine, but not as good as the apricot. And that seems to be fairly true. It's not a lot of difference between the ultramarine and the rose. So, um, so no, this is not just an opaque watercolor. And um, I'll let that dry and I'll show you because uh, once it's dry I can try and paint it over again. So if we want the rose to become kind of opaque we need to mix it with the white. Um, you can use a lot of white or not so much white. Uh, it, it depends on, of course, the color you want. You'll never get it as dark as the paint is, uh, the rose is on its own, but you can get it fairly dark. So this uh, is all something to consider. If you want to paint like the ultramarine on top of another layer, you will see the other layer through the ultramarine, uh, unless you mix it with white. Um, so um, one thing that is often said is, oh, with, with gouache you can layer uh, light colors over darker colors, which is the opposite of what you can with uh, watercolors. Watercolors you can only cover a darker color over a lighter. If you try to put a lighter color over a darker, it won't work because it's transparent and the dark will shine through. Uh, it can also apply sometimes to, to gouache. About transparency, you can water your gouache down to be transparent. Even this 
opaque color. If you just add enough water, it will be transparent. And uh, it will have a little bit of a different expression on the paper. So you can do that. Uh, you can, by and large, use them uh, thinned out like that, kind of like you use watercolor. They are diff more difficult to glaze because they sit, still sit on top of the paper because of the pigment size. But you can do it in a in a pinch. If you are using um, gouache in different diluted states, you can also kind of make an intermediate type of thing here. And you want to cover uh, layers with other layers. Then start with the transparent layers because you have lots of water in there and then cover if you want to cover anything then you can take these less diluted paints and put them on top of the the transparent layers so make the paint thicker than as as you come up in layers so it resembles the rule of thumb that you have in that is actually quite important in uh, oil painting where you have fat or lean where you have to have the thicker and more oily layers on the top and uh, the more diluted paints at the bottom in oil painting it is because otherwise things crack here it is really difficult to put if you if you take a diluted color a very wet uh, and transparent color like this. Wore it down a lot. See, now it's very thin. If we wanted to put that on top of this thick layer, it you it is so wet, so it just reactivates the paint underneath it and lifts it. It it really doesn't work well. But if every time we take a fairly dry paint um, with less water, it goes way better. You can paint over the transparent layers with with more concentrated paint. However, when you decide to layer, use a light hand, maybe even a softer brush than you would normally use, and don't scrub it. Don't push your pay, uh, brush into it make sure that there's enough water in there to, for it to flow well because um, if you scrub add it you will get the same effect as say you will just end up lifting up the, the layer underneath and have it mixed in with the, the, the color you're putting on top now if that's the effect you look for go right ahead but if you want like a the, the top layer color to, to look distinguishedly different from the, the one you're painting onto. Be a little decisive in your strokes. It's like the stroke is like that and that's it. You can maybe carefully correct it a little bit, but you can't sit and scrub at it and correct it and move things around because very quickly you will reactivate the layer underneath. Um, also let things dry before you layer them. The wetter things are, the more likely they are to mix. It might be a little redundant to say that, but um, that's it is actually important. So, um, and all of these things with transparency and stuff is why I like brands that put at least transparency on here as. Um, as, as an information. I like to have a pigment information as well because um, paints that has been mixed with white uh, is usually not good for making dark colors well. Now if we take this uh, magenta as it is on its own or rose as it is and we take some of the, the blue and mix the two together a reasonable ratio. I'll try not to get too much of that white in there. 
I get a very, very dark violet. Even if we if we take the same blue and we mix it with this that was the same color but was just mixed with white, it, it just never get anywhere as dark. It looks the same on camera but let's see if it uh, changes when it dries. It's very visible to me uh, in sitting here that this is much lighter than that. Um, the camera is just not cooperating so good. Let me, if I zoom in, maybe it will. Oops, and this is the. Um, um, I did well, just uh, anything with white in will just never ever be as, as dark as things without it and now if i wanted it to go near black like that that one is in its full strength um and i added black to it it would just go kind of a muddy gray with a purple undertone so um so that is why it, when i buy paint i try to buy paints that has no added white in it or black um I have used uh, black mixes uh, a lot, and I still do, but I don't try to, to, to ask very much of them. Th those are convenience colors, and so is the, the white mixes. I don't mind having, for instance, a rose like this if I have a... I would have liked there to be a magenta in here that didn't have white in it. It was actually a bad example with this purple, but it worked because I don't think there's very much white in there. Um, but if they both had white in, then, then I could definitely not make anything dark. Um, not not to the same degree as if the pigments had been pure. Um, Gouache tends to, to dry in a slightly different hue, uh, uh, not hue, uh, because that's a different color. It, it gets a little darker or a little lighter as it dries. And if that confuses you, please uh, have a piece of swatch paper where you can test your paint on, on the side until you get used to the color changes. I don't think the, the Artesas doesn't change so much that it is confusing and I actually don't think any of my paints really do. So, um, yeah. Um, I think that's kind of the base of it. You can always... Um, and this thing about putting lighter colors over darker. I recommend that you use a a mixture of something with white for that. Now I'm gonna mess up my ultramarine a little bit here and make a light blue, and I'll show you. See that? Make oops. <laughs> I'll zoom out again a little bit. Come on. Now that we have some reflection there. That covers that pink just nicely. And let me take some of the blue over here and work it. Well, that is quite thick. And it looks like it covers it well. But let's see when it dries, and I'm quite sure the pink will show through. And that's that's important with with these because the opacity is probably what, excuse me, what uh, changes the most as it dries. Um, that actually came on quite okay. I'm really impressed with these Atesa colors because they, they really work well. Um, 
the pigment load in here is really good because normally this wouldn't work um, so but that was also another lighter over a um, yeah and this was a strong white mix so this will definitely cover pretty much everything you try to put it on to that was too wet so it lifted the, the purple a little bit um, and that's wet still so yeah everything that has white in it will, will definitely layer well on top of other things and the other thing uh, if they're transparent or semi-transparent you might have to test it a little bit on the side to see how well it works if it doesn't work well on the, your first try let it dry and then give it another layer um, it's best if it works in the first try because you get the best uh, strokes and the clearest strokes if you if it works the first time um, but um, yeah, if it doesn't, then uh, and be light hand and be decisive. Uh, I don't don't fit it around too much with your your strokes. So um, that way, if you once you start layering them, then then you have to be be sure of what you want to do because. Uh, it's a lot of, of things you need to, to correct if you want to remove, if I say, I didn't like this, I can kind of wash it up. I left it. But the layer underneath comes with it. It lifts with it. So, so you have to reconstruct everything if you make a correction like like this and remember to to let the paper dry before you start redoing something like that um, so the gouache paintings works best if if you have a little bit of confidence in in what you're doing and, and allow your painting to kind of be what it is and sometimes it's better to make let little mistakes stay than it is to use a lot of effort to 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 fix them if if a line is not as straight as you want it or something try and just let it be because actually most of the mistakes we make when we paint other people won't ever notice or it will just give some of the painting some characteristics that uh, that defines it and, and actually makes it interesting to look at so um, I can't think of much else to say right now I think I've said enough and um, I hope this was helpful and if there's anything you want to know if there was anything I forgot please ask um, if I don't know it I'll try and find out I, I'm very nerdy that way so thank you for watching and please throw me a like subscribe and all that